about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I had a girl ask a question about how to achieve a painterly portrait in Photoshop. And so I've been kind of mulling that around and checking out some different techniques. And I think I've come up with something that is going to be very easy, very simple to understand. It does take a little bit of patience, but as with anything, as long as you have the right tool, you can do anything in Photoshop. So I've come up with this technique and I'm going to show you guys how I created these portraits. Both of these beautiful girls are my daughters. This portrait right here is the first one I created. So I'm going to go over how I created this one from scratch. All right, I do painting. I have painted in the past with real acrylic paint. I have a couple of paint programs that I use. Uh, one of them is called Sketchbook and it has a painterly tool in here. You can do the same type technique in this program as you can in Photoshop, but I think most of you guys will probably use Photoshop more often and have that more accessible to you. This is Photoshop Creative Cloud. I do have a digital tablet, a Wacom tablet, and I also have a Hurion tablet. I'll link you to those in the comments below so you guys can check those out. You'll have to have a digital tablet in order to do this it will get very frustrating trying to do this with a mouse. So uh, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. But there are options out there. They don't have to be an expensive Wacom. They can be a Hurion. And, and I use that for years. It works fine as well. So I'm going to turn this off and we're going to start at the very beginning, which was my actual photo shoot. Let me turn all these special effects off. All right, so originally I did a photo shoot of my daughter I loved her long hair. This was right before she cut it off and donated about 12 inches to Locks of Love. And being a sappy mother, I wanted to document her beautiful hair and do some kind of portrait with it. So what I did is that I, I just took a, a basic white drape, put her next to a reflector board in front of the window, and just snapped a couple of different poses. I like this particular flow of this image, the way the lines come down. And I thought this would be a great image to demonstrate how to do brush strokes because it's going to show the brush strokes really well. So once you find the image that you want, mask off the areas that you do not want to add in your portrait. I knew that this area down here was going to blend into my background itself, so I cut out everything around it. Now this, is, this can be totally rough sketch. It does not have to be a perfect mask. Just generally get the shape of it you are going to paint directly on top of the image. It's going to make your life so much easier. You won't have to use any sketch lines or have to use uh, come up with color palettes. You can sample the colors directly from the image itself. Then I wanted to add a little bit of color, so I found a stock image of a poppy. Now, one of the greatest places you can get stock images is called freeimages.com. I love this website. A lot of most everything on here is royalty free as long as you credit the source for the image. You can use a lot of these in commercial works as well. Each image is going to be a little bit different so you're going to need to read, uh, read the rules of use. So I just typed in poppy and as you can see there's so many of these images that pop up. In order to download them you just click on it and then right here it says standard restrictions. So if you don't know what that means, you'll need to click on it and you can read exactly how you can use it. But uh, basically, as long as you don't take it and sell it or use it in a product where it's going to be a standalone product, then you should be able to use these. So I found this image right here of a poppy and that's what I used as uh, the flower shape. I cut it out and then I found some textures as well. Here, let me turn this off. Now, most of the time, I create my backgrounds after I create my painted portrait, uh, the painted model or the painted object, because I like to take these colors and match the background to it instead of putting this on a background and trying to make the object match. I think it works better the other way around. Now, let's see. Um, I showed you the stock files. Now I'm going to show you this painting technique, but I'm going to use an apple, the classic apple painting. 
I found this image on Free Stock Images as well. All right, let me get everything in the way here. All right, the first thing you need to do is create a layer on top of everything. And I use the mixer brush tool right here. I like dry setting. This box is checked here and load solid colors only. I keep that checked. This right here is how you're going to control how much paint is going to be laid down. And I always keep sample all layers checked. Now for the brush, I use natural brushes too. Okay. Oh, it's already loaded. And I like this number 118 here. This is a dark, a pastel dark. And this does have more of a look of a crayon or a pastel to it. I really like the texture of it. Let me show you. So this is, well, this is at 100%. The flow is at 100%. But as you can see, when you layer these on top of one another, they get a really nice brushed look to them. All right. I'll start out at 100% flow. And... The first thing you'll do is take your eyedropper brush. You can turn that on by clicking the Option or the Alt tool. Click, and I want to make my brush bigger. You can change the size of your brush by holding down Option and Alt. No, Control and Alt. And you can change. I kind of start fairly large. And then you just start laying down color. Now, if this is laying down too much color, and it, you feel like you don't have a lot of control over it, then just back this down. I'm going to back it way down here. And then as you can see, it doesn't lay down nearly as much color. And you can build it up over time. Now I think I've got it too low. Let me bring it up here. Now all you're going to do is sample from the image itself. This is so much easier than trying to find a color palette and getting all your colors to blend together. Just paint right on top of the image itself. Now sometimes, like in the case of uh, the painting that I just did of my daughter, I got her too close to the window and it ended up bleaching out some of the hair, or the color tone in the hair. And so if you don't like the colors that it's pulling in on one side of the object, then just pick them from over here and blend them in that way. Now this is just patience. You just click and blend. The more you blend, the, mo the more photographic it looks. I kind of like a loose texture though. I like the more impressionistic painting. I think I went a little bit too blended on my daughter's image that I just finished. I really like uh, where you can see, see now you can see the brush strokes are starting to, to blend in. And just keep sampling and blending. Just turn on some jazz or whatever it is that you listen to and create the painting. Now let me zoom in and I'll do some of the details. I keep going until you can't see the portrait or the painting. Well, the picture. I keep going until you can't see the picture underneath. All right, so here's how to do the detail. Make your brush a little bit smaller, sample, and just stroke up and down. Now, as with traditional painting, your dark colors are gonna look like they're going away from you, and the lighter colors are gonna look like they're higher or coming toward you. And that's how you give everything its shape darker goes now see if I hadn't let me show you see it looks like there's actually a division there or one spots lower than the other so you sample the lighter one and then blend it together and you can get a much more rounded feel it's just like what you do in traditional painting if you were painting with real acrylics it's the same exact process Of course, now that looks like it's a little dent. So as you can see, you can change the shape pretty easily and pretty quickly. This 
this is actually kind of a meditative process. I really enjoy it. I think you guys kind of get the get the gist of exactly how to do this. It was this exact process that I used to create the painted portraits of my daughters. All right, so let's get rid of that and I'm going to move on to the background. Now, I used a similar technique once I what? Let me turn on this. Once I finished painting my daughter, I always do the objects first and then do the background. So I put my daughter on the background and I turned on these textures and made sure that they were going to blend in the colors that I wanted. I think I liked this one a lot better. So to create the background, let me turn all this off. You do a same technique. Turn the background on. Make your brush fairly large. I do this at 100%. Sample and squibble. And the more you blend together, the more you sample, the smoother it gets. But in this particular case, I really wanted that brushed, rough, like a roughed out type feel to it. And so I kept going until it turned into this. Now let me turn this back on normal. So this is what I ended up after some blending and messing around. And I put this underneath my image. And I felt like it just was, didn't have enough depth to it. I wanted it to have a little more motion. So I went over here to my stock files and I found this texture here. I think this was like a bokeh pack that I downloaded. I will go through and find all these links for you guys and I'm going to put them in the description below the video so you guys can find it. I really loved how this looked like it had some motion or movement to it and I used the hue saturation to change it to the color tones that I needed then the brush stroke background that I just made, I put it on top and I turned it to screen. And I thought it was a little bit too bright, so I copied that and turned the one underneath it to multiply. And then I put my painting on top of that. So when I start masking it out, as you can see right here, it looks like it blends in. I used this actual pastel brush on the mask itself. So you can see here, in order to blend it in with the background, so it looked like the strokes all blended in together with it. And I used the same technique in order to paint the poppy, and I placed it in her hair. And once I got it to this point, I felt like it just was still missing something. If you've followed my work very long, you know that I put sparkle or glitter or something in all of my images. I'm, I think I'm part magpie. I absolutely love it. So I went into my bokeh packs that I've downloaded and I found this and I love the colors. Once you turn this to screen, it's going to take all of this darkness out, but it was still going to have these pinks and golden tones, so I knew it was going to work really well with my image. So I brought it in and turned it to screen, and it really just added that sparkle that I needed to kind of give it a little more oomph. And so... I used this same exact backdrop, I exported it, and I used the same exact technique to create this image of my older daughter. I'm going to walk you guys through how I did that real quick. I'll just show you what the original image was. So this was the original image. I used the same exact painting techniques, painted directly on top of it. And then there are going to be times where you're going to paint it and you don't like it. Just erase it and start all over again. That I did that with her ear. I couldn't get it right and I erased it. I did it with her eyes. So, And then you can add, uh, you can just keep covering up your mistakes. So you can see here, I thought her cheek was too dark, so I added a little more color there. And then I tweaked her hair back in here. 
So once you turn the bottom layer off, then this is what you're left with. I think I blended this a little too much though. I wish I'd left it a little more loose. Then I added the poppy in her hair here. This is also from a stock image. And then I added the same bokeh uh, on top of it. So I hope you found this really helpful and it gives you a lot of ideas that you guys can jump off and run with. It just takes patience and it's really cool because you can add your own special effects and blending modes and things which you can't do in traditional portraiture so you can kind of keep all of those techniques in your back pocket and as you can see when you combine them they come up with some really beautiful results. If you guys have any questions at all just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them and you guys keep learning and keep sharing it forward.